Ladies and gentlemen, with the Animal Alliance of Eastern Kentucky, one of my favorite people on planet Earth, Miss Shaw Reynolds. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. It's so good to see you. I am, I'm always happy to see you. And it's awesome, too, because, I mean, Wolfstock, right around the corner. It is here. It is almost Yay. here. I'm so happy. Yay, Wolfstock. Y'all's shirts are the bomb.com this year. I mean, like, it seems like every single year they get better and better. I know. Every year I'm like... I'll never do better than this when I can't find a better one. And we do. Every year it gets just, it, it makes me happy. And now we are, this is our fourth Wolfstock shirt. Yeah, I was, uh, whenever you came in here, I had the 2018 one on. I was going through, I got them all in my closet, all side by side. And I seen the 2019, I'm like, dang, four years. I know. That is so crazy. It has flown. It has flown. But yeah, I mean, like I like the, uh, I don't know what you call this Mardi type Mardi Gras of is the uh, pattern name. Ooh, I like it. Mardi Gras. And I like the name Mardi Gras, too, because it's going to be a party. It's going to be a party. Partying for the animals. The lineup, too, this year is crazy. We ha- and, and such a variety. I yeah. mean, there's a little bit of something for everyone. We have, back in the Starlight Review, Sean Whiting, Coltown Dixie, Chelsea Nolan, Jen Tackett, and Eddie Jenkins. I mean, it's it's an all star lineup. It really is under one roof in one night for a wonderful cause. You can't get better than that. And how much are tickets? Twenty dollars. Boom. Boom. Well, seventeen, but twenty plus the processing and stuff with the Mountain Arts Center. And you can get them at macarts.com or at 606-886-2636, or you can just go up to the box office at the Mac because they've got that outdoor window now. And also one of the best places to see a show in Eastern Kentucky. The I mean, the sound, Mac is the best venue. Seats, you can't beat it. I mean, there's not a bad seat in the house. The sound is perfect. That's why musicians love to play there. It's yeah. so great. And I mean, for the people who want to see a show, whether you're in like the back or the front row, I mean, there's not a bad seat in the house. There's not a bad seat in the house, and there will be appropriate uh, distancing here. So don't worry if you're, you know, worried about that. There'll be enough room that you don't have to be like right near someone unless it's your family. And even then, if you don't want to sit by them, you can still distance. <laughs> it, it, it's going to be great. You know, um, if you want to wear a mask, you're more than welcome to wear a mask in the lobby. You can take it off when you come into the arena part of it. It's, but the sound system, the, uh, the views from every seat, like you said, it's perfect everywhere you sit. And also, uh, I know some people were asking about this last year and the years before that, and they finally got it, some adult beverages. Thank you so much to the Brick House. They will be serving and selling adult beverages in the lobby. So, yes, and, and what better for a rock and roll than a little bit of little beverage to relax? And yeah, it goes hand in hand. goes hand in hand, and... Um, Take advantage of that, and uh, thank you to Brickhouse for supporting us. We're getting so much local support. Yeah, it seems like, I mean, the support has just grown more and more each and every year. I'm seeing more people talk about it on social media and just around town, too. I, I, every time I wear, like, a Wolfstock shirt, people are like, oh, like, even, like, just around, not even the Prestonburg area, around other areas, too. They tell me, like, how they're looking forward to it or just how awesome of a thing that is. Like, everybody knows about Wolfstock now. Yes. Uh, one of my coworkers uh, wore her shirt into um, a Walmart in a different town and somebody's like I want one of those shirts and she could tell them the information you know contact Animal Alliance and you can have one of your own I have uh, mailed this particular shirt to Florida uh, wow. West Virginia uh Tomorrow, I'm mailing one out to Massachusetts. Uh, they're going everywhere. People love Wolfstock and what we do. Wolfstock is worldwide. It is. We're going to we're going to we're going to own it, baby. And, and for the people who are also living under a rock and don't know anything about Wolfstock, tell them the purpose behind this event because it's a great yes. cause. Yes, Animal Alliance of East Kentucky is a nonprofit organization, and our goals are to educate the public regarding more humane animal care and bills that should be supported to uh, make us more friendly, animal friendly in terms of a state. And we also provide low cost spay and neuter to a four county region, Floyd, Johnson, Martin and McGoffin County. So for a small copay, you can get your dog or cat spayed or neutered plus a rabies shot. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. See, and, and for some reason this year, I mean, maybe I'm just paying a little bit more attention to it because my house for some reason has ran rapid with, uh, Animals just popping out of nowhere, just coming up. And and thankfully, I've been able to get a lot of them, well, all of them in good homes. But uh, I don't know, it just seems to be a little bit more of a problem this year this, with the stray animals. It is a horrible year. Um, there, It is the, the shelters and the rescues are at capacity. 
There's no more room. And we, it is raining kittens and it is raining puppies out there. And there's nowhere for them to go. And so they are coming to bad ends. You know, people are dumping them in abandoned areas where no one even can find them because just to get rid of them or on the side of the road or just letting them starve or doing worse to them. Yeah. Um, just because you don't spay and neuter pets, you know. And then if you see a stray, you know, it's going to get pregnant, you know, if it's a female or it's going to get a female pregnant if it's a male. So see if you can you can capture it or get someone else to capture it and and call a rescue and at least you know if you hold it for a while they can eventually find a home for it and get it spayed and neutered and stop this the only way we can stop this problem is start at the ground level which is spaying and neutering preventing these animals from even being born in the first place there's way too many you know there's there's not enough homes there's not enough shelter area we just have to stop all these animals from reproducing and it can be done you know we, we make it affordable and if you live outside our service area we have a list of places you can call or things places or areas and things that will help you um save some money on it there there's some other uh organizations like us out there that can help you pay there's uh, a care credit card which is for animals that you can pay off your vet bill slowly you know if you need it, your animal fixed a lot of people love their animals and they want them to be spayed and neutered, but they just can't afford it because we've all had that times where we're living Mm. from check to check. You know, it's it's, it's tough and and a vet bill can be very high. We want to alleviate that problem being why you don't spay and neuter. You know, for on our website, aaeky.org, we offer um, our application. It is for $25 to $30 copay, depending on your income level. And other places are like that, too. And we can hook you up with something. Don't just let your animal keep having babies because you don't know what else to do. There's help out there. Yeah, And I know that some people out there are like, oh, the more, the merrier. I mean, <coughs> I, I would love the world to be overran with animals, too. But some of these just, they die horrible deaths or they starve they out in the wild. I mean, yeah, they, they a they lot get of mange, them suffer. And then they just, you know, it's, it's starving to death is bad enough, but to be all itchy and and... and disease ridden and, and dying that way and it's a slow painful death you know you 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 you, you set them out and you're like oh somebody will pick them up and give them a good home no maybe one in 15 gets yeah. you know picked up in a good home and another thing i don't know if it's where i was working from home a lot during the pandemic but i swear if i saw one more homeschooling person right up there i wanted my ch- we did a joy of life unit and i wanted my child to experience the birth so we let our cat have kittens no, no, you cannot do There's that. YouTube videos. I know. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, just go on to YouTube. There's pl- if you want your child to witness that. What uh, type of weird parent is that anyway? Well, I got um, blocked because I put on there. Well, then you need to let them experience the sorrow of euthanasia and take them to the shelter when they have to euthanize for space. Uh. And mm. might have said something, why don't you just have one yourself and let her experience that joy of birth and have another child? <laughs> so <laughs> I. I'm no longer welcome on that person's Facebook page. That's a weird person anyway. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can, you don't need to let your child experience any joy of birth by watching a puppy or kitten or a dog or cat having puppies and kittens. That's, that's not the way you make that point. Like you said, there's a YouTube video for everything. Exactly. And and, I mean, you hear of horrible stories like that too. Like back in uh, 2019, there was that person somewhere here in Kentucky, the one with all the chihuahuas. Do you remember that? I remember that. I remember the one with all the cats, which yeah. was last year. Yeah. That, oh, man. I, and uh, then the Trixie Foundation, which was over 100 dogs. And they still just did another, um, what's it called when you put the trial off more? Uh, they ask, extension. Extension. Yeah. This is like the fourth, fifth extension because he keeps changing lawyers. So and they say, well, we need time to study the case. So it's been years, you know, years. I don't get what you have to study about that either. I and, know. And, and a lot man of, did bad. Man needs to go to jail. That's all you need to study. Yeah, and, and a lot of these people, whenever it comes to the laws, I mean, the consequences that they Thanks face. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning so in to mental. this week's Holy Slap World Happy Hour. Right I mean, here on Fox like, I think the, uh, the for the full case that I was clips, talking about is can go over check 50. It out on our Foxy Chihuahuas Facebook page little, tiny or the WPRG.TV the most those people would get is a YouTube year in channel. Yes. Well, as always, have yes. a great weekend, yes. everybody. Yeah, and that Enjoy the rest of the music. Brings us and to we'll you know, the backyard breeders. And those animals never get out of their cage.
And a lot of times they don't even put like the the decent bottom on the cage. They're just walking on the wire, you know, and that kills their feet after a while. And they never groom them. So they're so matted. They can't even see. They can't move their arms and stuff because the mats are so thick, you know. And when they go in, you know, those animals have never had a human touch, you know, because they have an automatic feeder and an automatic water. And they just go in there when they want the puppies to pop out so they can sell them. So if you have to buy from a breeder, Go visit. Don't say, Mm -hmm. don't let them say, we'll meet you at the gas station with your precious bundle of joy. No, you need to go see, you know, walk in the backyard, walk around and see what they have set up. There are a few good breeders, a few, but then there's others that just use it. A lazy source of income is what I call it. Yeah, it it really is. I know that they're trying to pass uh, one law right here to where uh, breeders have to have, I think it's like a year worth of documentation on the animal and that they have to go through a lot more uh things too here it is Uh, they will enable local governments to legislate enforcement action for dog and welfare safety so long that the ordinance oh no i was reading the wrong thing i'm sorry oh but anyways okay here it is to define animal shelter breeder broker and retail pet shop prohibit Retail pet shops from selling dogs, cats, and rabbits allow retail pet shops to collaborate with animal shelters to showcase dogs, cats, or rabbits. Require retail pet shops to maintain records documenting the source of each dog, cat, or rabbit it sells for at least one year. And also to include the penalty for retail pet shop owners who violate this act. So, I mean, they're, they're having to get, get a little bit more documentation with this. And it is a good thing because there's so many of those cases that you hear about yes. whenever it comes to these backyard breeders that are just leaving 50 of them in a cage or sometimes even more than that. That The cat story that you mentioned, oh, that was so horrible. Yes. And the um, one of the rescues I work with um, is a golden retriever one in Tennessee, and occasionally uh, a breeder will give them a dog that can't breed anymore or the breeder will set it out and will nab it. And they've never had vetting, you know, so they're sick or they have heartworms or they have tumors or they've they're just sick. And um, it's sad, you know, that 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 they're making, you know, like over a thousand dollars per puppy and they won't even get a shot of antibiotic for the mom. You know, I know. And it also blows my mind, too, how people pay that much money for a cat or a dog whenever local animal shelters are basically giving away animals yes and not you know i'm a mutt girl i love the mutts but if you want a pure breed there are pure breed rescues you know the golden retriever rescue i work with um for every every breed of animal there is a rescue because not everybody can keep them all in so they give them up so just google it you know golden Mm. retriever rescue and you can even do it in your area if you don't want to drive far uh dachshund rescue rescue there's tons of them yeah it it it, just, it blows my mind, and to each his own. I'm still glad the animals get in the home, but I'm also glad that they're passing laws like this, so that these retail pet shops and the backyard breeders have to provide start yeah. providing a little bit more information with this, and also how they have to work with the uh, local animal shelters too. I like that little like thing that they that. threw in there. Well, and the other thing with the breeders, you know, good breeders, bad breeders, you know, more bad than good, because a lot of times it's just somebody's like oh man i can make a lot of money breed my animals and either they do the pure breeds or they get something doodle it's always you know i I just saw a sheep a doodle the other day a sheep dog in a doodle you know i'm like oh i was wondering what you were talking about. i know but everything i mean it's like the frankenstein of animals is something doodle you know and these breeders, even the ones with the pure breeds that don't know what they're doing, they have to understand genetics. They have to understand how many times you can breed because they overbreed or they'll breed a dog that has some undesirable traits like um, cancers. You know, goldens are, are ten, prone to cancers. And so they won't look at like the health of, you know, several generations and, and deformities and stuff. They just mm-hmm. want those animals to pop out. So people will pay a lot of money for an animal and then it turns out it's really, really sick. Yeah, really, really sick. And then the 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 most that uh, some of the breeders will say, "Oh, we'll give the dog back and we'll give you a partial refund." 
and they'll just kill the dog. So a lot of people, they're in love with the dog by that time. They don't want to do that, so they're stuck with a huge vet bill. So know your breeder, people, if you have to do a breeder. But better yet, know your shelters. Know your local shelters and get to know them and say, I'm looking for a chill dog because it's for my grandma and she just wants something you know, to snuggle with and to keep her company during the day. Or I need a high energy dog because we jog all the time and we want to take it camping. They know those dogs. They know their personalities. They can hook you up with the right dog or cat. Yeah, and, and we have some great animal shelters here in the we area, do. too. The we Pike do. Pike County, Floyd County area. I mean, it's uh, some of the, and some of the best people, too, that work there. I mean, real animal lovers. Real animal lovers, and they are overwhelmed right now. They are exhausted because, you know, and, and they'll say, I'll see it all the time, they'll say, we, we can't take animals in right now, and then the next day somebody's left a box by their door yeah. full of puppies or kittens. And, I mean, like, they they have to do what they have to do. They do. They are... are uh, our animal shelters are not kill shelters, are they? No kill, but you know, no shelter is 100% no kill because if somebody comes in and they're really, really sick and they're, oh, yeah. and then, uh, but even a no kill shelter still can kill for space. Mm. You know, um, some of them do that. I'm, I'm not familiar right now with any local ones that do that. Thank goodness. Yeah. But bless their hearts, they take them home. They, make room where there's no room and people don't understand how stressful is that every day to know these beautiful animals you're trying to take care of don't have enough space and you know the food's running out and somebody has to pay that air conditioning bill today is going to be one of the hottest days you know and we 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 need help you know we need it's a community problem and community has to help yeah and that's another thing too i mean the community can help i mean any animal shelter will take in any type of donation that you have, whether it's your own personal time, taking care of the animals, food, I mean, a- anything. Yes. They'll take anything. Yeah, you know, $5, that'll help pay a bill, you exactly. know, because they do have bills. They have utility bills. Uh, they they wash tons of laundry a day, you know, where the cats and dogs lay on the blankets and the stuff. You know, you've got the ones with Parvo that they have to throw that stuff away and get new so you know if you've got some used towels used blankets used comforters take them and they can use them yeah and and i I just i I love how much care that people are putting into our local animal shelters as well like whenever i see a post from one that's talking about the new litter that they got in today or whatever you'll see hundreds of shares yes on there just people trying to get the word out and also people sponsoring uh adoptions as well i see that quite more often yes they'll help pay for something and then something you might want to ask your shelter is if you're not ready for a full-time long-term dog or cat ask if you could foster it for a little while you know take Hmm. some of the pressure off of them and just say well you know we we would like to keep a dog for a couple of months just to see you know how well it relates to us and stuff and if you've got the room for it and stuff you know offer to can i just until it gets adopted can i um, foster it yeah, it's it's as simple as that. People, anybody that is animal lovers out there and wants to help, there's a million ways that yes. you can. Yes. Yeah, just like uh, with the uh, laws that they're trying to pass right now. There's a website that I found that's really cool, uh, kyanimalwelfare.com. On there, you can see all the bills that they're trying to pass here in Kentucky, and there's still quite a bit. And it, it's crazy how recent to some of the things that have got passed like how it took that long yes well as we've talked before kentucky was firmly for 11 years at the bottom of all the states in terms of animal welfare we were 50 yeah number 50 for 11 years and only recently have we gone up a notch you know i think we're a 47 yeah we're 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 not bottom anymore (laughs) we're building that foundation and it's slow but and that's only because of one bill that got passed that the other states didn't have. We have one bill that we passed two years ago that made us not 50. Yeah, and and for the people that don't know about that, this blows my mind because to anybody out there with any good common sense, you would think like, oh, that should have been passed 30 plus years ago. Yes. But no, it's very recent. Yes. For the people that don't know. For I'll the people that, uh, the, um, anti-bestiality law preventing people from having sexual relations with animals you Two, would think 2019 2019 2 years ago that that's that's as far that's whenever people were not allowed to do that before Two and, years and ago. It, it trust me people it's been happening all this time and law enforcement's hands were tied because they would go and the person would be doing that and they couldn't arrest them they couldn't do anything to them. It wasn't against the law to do that activity. 
that blows my mind. Me too. I, I, I know that some of the some of the things that had to do with uh, farmers was some of the stuff holding it back. But even then, if you read the fine print of that bill, it had nothing to had do with nothing. anything that was going well, to affect them. And, and it was special interest groups that were inflaming it all, you know, because there's two specific ones out there that fight every animal welfare law we put out there because they say animals are property and we should be able to do what we want to with them. They have fought us for years nope. and years. And they have big money and they do a lot. Well, actually, one is a, one of our um, representatives is a member of one of those organizations, mm. a senator, I believe. Yeah. And um, no, a representative. And they they have huge pockets and they throw this money at them. And which is why when I put something out there that this is a bill that is going to be sponsored uh, to make life better for animals, we have to call and support it. Yeah, they've got the big bucks and they can give lots of money saying, well, you vote against this bill and we'll give you $10,000. But if you have 5,000 calls saying, we want you to support this bill and this determines how we vote next year. You know, they want to stay in office. I mean, they like that money, but if they think they're going to lose their votes and get voted out of office, they will finally listen to the people. Mm. Yeah, I mean, votes matter a little bit more than money. Yes, yes, because those people just have one vote the same as us, you know, so they, they, that, all that money they're pouring into it relies on the fact that people will say, oh, someone else will call, someone else will do it. No, no one else will call, no one else will do it. It has to be every single one of us. What are the two groups that always fight it? People will, well, I don't want to say them on okay. air, but. I I'll, I talk about it often on my page, so. Okay. Yeah. One, one has to do with an insurance company, and one has to do with just a, a big group. It blows my mind how people have that medieval mindset that animals are property. To do with can, what we want. What? Oh, my God. That makes my skin crawl. I know. If you've ever had an animal, you know that they have feelings. They feel pain. You know, my animals are part of my family. You know, they yeah. are part of my family. And it would devastate me to have someone cause them harm or to have them feeling bad, you know, or something. It's you just once you have one, you know that they have a soul, you know that they have feelings. And for people to say, I, I don't have to feed them, I can put them in a cage and just let them starve. Nobody can touch me. That just what kind of monster could do that? And those people they deserve I, I think I think that animals should be looked at the same way as children because to some people that is their child yes. you know and they yes. have just as much of a life and a soul as a small child yes. so whatever you would do to a child if you do the same thing to an animal I think it should be the same exact consequences I do too I do too you know, you are you are causing pain and to purposely do it you know if you leave if you move away from your home and you leave that dog in the house which happens a lot or cat you know nobody's feeding it no it's not getting water it's in a house that's probably a hundred and something degrees mm -hmm. you know it how can you live with yourself every night knowing that that animal is suffering what are the consequences for animal abuse in kentucky right now little to nothing little to nothing you can um well, right now we know you can't have relations with it. That is against yeah, the law. Thank God. But you you can starve them still. You can uh, not get them care when they need it. It's It, it takes a lot. But another bill that did get passed uh, a couple of years ago was uh, veterinarians can now report abuse. Yeah. And, and even that was still very recent. Like 2000, I think that was 2019. And again, it was fought. Not by the veterinarians. The veterinarians wanted to do it. You know, And can imagine how heartbreaking to have your patient come in that can't tell you what's going on, but you know, you know the signs of abuse, yeah. and you have to give it back to that owner, you know. But now they can report it. So, yeah, I thank God. Because I mean, like, besides the owner, that would probably be the only other person that would have the chance to see and really know what's going on. Yes, yes. And then back to the other law that got passed. Um, somebody's actually in jail because of that now. Mm -hmm. You know, they they actually and. Uh, he is waiting a court date. You know, the, it went to grand jury. The grand jury decided a trial needed to be held. Yay. And we're just waiting for a date to be assigned for court. And you can bet that I will be sitting there in that courthouse to watch because they say the more that show up to show support. And yeah. You don't influence a judge, but they see that everybody's taking this seriously, which we should. Oh, yeah. I, it, it just it blows my mind how 2019. That's, that's how recent ago that was. Had that happened it, a year earlier, 
Nobody could have done anything. And the 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 stomping glob wasn't that last the year? crush law. Yeah, the crush law. The, the, uh, and um, there was well, the law had always been there, but it had a few little loopholes that people were getting through. And uh, they they wrote some other bills that closed that loophole. And when President Trump at the time signed it, it was reported wrong in the media. They kept saying, oh, it's now a felony. It's a felony to abuse an animal. No, it's a mm. felony to abuse an animal in that tiny, narrow, specific way. So that's when every, I mean, I, I just have it cut and pasted in my Facebook that I can pull it up and just click on it and paste it because somebody will say, oh, well, they can't do that anymore because it's now a felony nationwide. No, it's not. And so I just cut and paste that little thing that says, tells them why it's not. And that's why they still need to support and still need to call and let people know we need more uh stricter laws regarding animal cruelty yeah so um, uh, they can crush an animal yes but if they were to kick a dog in the face that's perfectly fine cut his leg off you know they do that they do that a lot and it's we see that all the time and dragging behind cars you know it's it's horrible thing and why do you they get mad at the animal and they punish it in a really severe way and to me if you see that as punishment you're probably doing your kids Oh yeah, well, a huge disservice too. Ain't that a thing? Like uh, early, like well, the abuse of animals is early signs for serial killer mindsets. It is, and abusive mindsets. There, uh, I have some friends who have published uh, research articles, real research articles, not just I heard this on Facebook articles. And uh, she gives them to she gives these articles to policemen and to uh, public defenders, county attorneys, showing direct correlation between. A, somebody who abuses animals will go on to humans. It, yeah. it, it is more likely than not that they will um, harm humans. So if you don't even care about animals, at least care about stopping this cycle of abuse that goes on up to hurt people eventually. Yeah, it's, it's just heartbreaking how slow a process it is. But at least we're up to 47. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're 47. We're, we're yeah. 47. Yeah, yeah uh, we're not the bottom anymore. But, but for the people that like know of abuse happening, like if they have a neighbor that has some animals locked up in a cage outside or mm-hmm. any type of abuse no food and water that's, go, that's okay. going on, what can they do? Can they do anything? You can, and, but you have to stay with it. And you know, people will say like, well, I don't want to make my neighbor mad at me. Well, do you want the abuse to stop? You know, you ha- and, and you can report anonymously. They don't always know it's you. And if they do know it's you, then we'll just have to do something about them. You know, we'll have to... Mm -hmm. Um, start by calling your animal control officer you know get in touch with the shelter and they can tell you who that is or they can report it to them too you know start there go up the chain call your local police Um, sometimes nothing happens at those levels call Kentucky State Police Mm -hmm. you know go on up don't just say nobody did anything I'm stopping no and I've seen many many people do it and finally something gets done you just have to hang in there a little bit. Keep making those phone calls. But call Kentucky State Police. Call, uh, put it on Facebook if you can. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people doing that. You know, that one of the few good things I love about Facebook is making things public, you know, and people who abandon dogs, you know, at a house. Show that house. And if you've got their name, put their name out there. But that way, rescues can see it. You know, contact rescues if a dog's been abandoned, you know, and they may not be able to take it right away because everybody's overwhelmed. But... Yeah. If you can feed that dog and give it shelter for a few days, everybody will try their best to get it a home, you know, and yeah. to get it out of state maybe to a rescue. And for the people, too, that like want to uh, help with the welfare bills and all that, how do they go about doing that? You There's, uh, like the website you said, there's sites mm-hmm. you can see what what's out there, and there's an 800 number you can call, which I don't have with me, but I bet it's easy. Just, just Google bill status in Kentucky, and, and you can find it. And there's, um, you can call and voice your support, and it's just a phone call. You just find out what the bills are, and you can find that on by Googling it, you know, current laws, current bills being introduced in Kentucky. And um, then there's a, there's a bill status line, and you can call it, and they are the nicest people in the world. Usually it's retired people who just love politics, and they get in. Yeah. Do you have the number? Yeah, 1-800-372-7181. And there's also a, that's the legislative message line, and the bill status line is 1-866-840-2835. And again, you just type in bill status NKY number. That's mm-hmm. all I typed in Google. It's, Google right there. it's really easy to find. And you can tell them, they will even tell you who your representatives are. You just give them your zip code, 
and they all look all that up for you. And usually what I do is I send a message to my personal ones, but then I say, I want everybody to get this message too, because eventually, hopefully it'll come to the floor and those people need to know it's got support too. You yeah. know, so I just say, give it to everybody, but make sure mine get it and that they know that I vote every year and that this is important. For you. You, you don't threaten, you know, you don't say, you know, if I don't get this law passed, you know, you'll never work in Frankfurt again. No, you say, this is very important to me. I have voted every year. I support you. And this is something that means a lot to us. And we need to make Kentucky a better place. So mm -hmm. would you please support this bill or vote for this bill? You kill them with kindness. Kill them with kindness. Yes. They'll, they'll, they'll more what is it more flies with honey you know you can yeah, 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 yeah. So, so 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 be nice to them and and some are hard to be nice to especially when they actually come out and you know that they're not going to vote for it but you need to let them know and then you need to remember it you know um, i keep track of who votes what way and when they come up for election again i put out on facebook well they did not vote for this they did not vote for this here's why i'm voting for their opponent yeah and i mean the politicians need to keep in mind that if they want to stay in office, they yes. have to do what's best for the people. Yes. And it seems to be there's a lot more animal lovers nowadays than ever before. Yes, yes. I was a very cynical um, person who followed politics because I'm like, you know, they relied for a long time on the fact that Kentucky had such low voter turnout. They could do anything they wanted and nobody was going to really care. They still had their positions. People are losing positions now because people are caring to vote. And we actually had a couple of... Um, representatives who are animal lovers and they actually introduced a bunch of laws didn't go anywhere but they will next year you know we'll get them out there yeah i i, I sure do hope so for the people that like abuse animals are they ever allowed to have animals again it depends on the county it depends on the judges and the um, district attorneys we had a when I lived in Johnson County, we had a guy who had his animals taken from him because of abuse, and he was ordered to not have another animal for either three or five years. Mm -hmm. Pops up on Facebook a picture of his kid holding a cat by its neck, not strangling it, but holding it inappropriately. So I called the county attorney. I'm like, there's an animal in this house. And he's like, well, it belongs to the wife, so we can't do anything about it. Yeah, that. So, and, so, and so they, they nothing. That breaks my heart. Yeah. So judges maybe need to word it. You cannot be within 50 feet of an animal in yeah, your, in your dwelling. I mean, there's a way to get around this. And this is what attorneys and things need to make sure is in place when the sentence is passed down. Not just you can't own another animal because he could have 80 dogs in that house and they belong to the kid or they belong to the wife. You need to watch it because abusers will find a way around it. Yeah. You got to stay a step ahead of them. Well, it, it's, it seems I'm just so glad that the some of the laws that have got passed have got passed. It's a long time coming, but slow progress is, it is still progress. progress. Yeah, and, and as I tell my friends, we are building the foundation. You know, we started with nothing, absolutely nothing, and we are building the foundation that the people who come after us, it's going to be easier on them because we've done a lot of the hard work, and they just add to it and add to it, and eventually. It will be good, but right now we're still fighting. I see a lot of uh, organizations that y'all also work with too. Uh, what, what are some of the people that you that help with the East Kentucky Animal Alliance? The, you mean other like um, uh, that, well, I know uh, there's a transport company. What are they called? Port Safe a Hands. Safe Hands. Okay, okay. They're a rescue. They're not just a transport company. Okay. Yes. Uh, Safe Hands has opened up in Prestonsburg. They are, I believe, I'm hoping I'm getting this right, Minnesota-based. And mm. they would take a lot of the Floyd County shelter animals, the dogs, uh, because some states, believe it or not, have such strict spay and neuter laws that there's no strays. You know, everybody's animal has to be spayed and neutered and or else you get fined. And they love to see animals coming like um, I have a friend in Newfoundland and she's like we have zero shelters we have uh, zero strays and they get excited because a plane will come with a bunch of animals and everybody's just waiting you know to to come and get a dog to be part of their family and she loves her dog dearly you know her dog was a rescue dog that came yeah. so other places, there's not a ton that was, I mean, it's not like we can like send all of our animals there, but Stray Hearts takes a lot of the animals. And so they bought um, Dr. Rudolph Usley's place when he passed, hmm. and they are turning it into a big place for uh, to keep the animals, to get them healthy, to work with them, and then yeah. transport them on uh, back to Minnesota. 
That's so cool. So, yeah, but yeah, I do like stray hands. I, I I like all rescues as long as they do good. There's some bad ones out. There's bad everything out there, yeah. but I I will. That's why you research everything you do. You know, you look at where are you sending these dogs? What are you doing? Ask some questions and then yeah. then choose who you want to work with. Yeah, and and to go and visit. Uh, yes. There, I, I went to Georgia just a few uh, weeks ago to visit some family down there, and they have a golden doodle, and she is beautiful. Her her name is Georgia, actually. And whenever they went to the uh, breeder to get her, they realized what type of a place it was. E- even Georgia at the time, she had had several bite marks and stuff from oh. other dogs and everything, and her health wasn't in good condition. And I, the, the list goes on with the problems that they had with Georgia at the time, and they report. This they they bought her mm-hmm. too, and uh, once they they got her home, that's when they called and reported this breeder. Yay for and, them! Yes, and to my knowledge, that it was shut down, and all the doodles were rescued, and hopefully found all good homes. Yes, but but I mean, um, if if they would have just got her at a gas station, and the people would have had a chance to fix her up a little bit or whatever. Who knows? It might still be going today. And you know, and just because they show you a picture of what the mom looks like, that could not be the mom. Yeah. You know, they're like, look how happy all of our animals here, you know, at our place. That it's it's a big lie. But that just reminded me of another law that we can't get past that we're trying to um use when the shelters come in or the rescues come in and take all those dogs. Do you know in Kentucky the cost of vetting and feeding and taking care of those animals is on the rescues? not the person that they take them from. They get off scot-free. And they can't adopt out those animals until the court case is over and that person is found guilty. If that person is found innocent, they have to return the animals and with no reimbursement of the vet care or all the food, all the stuff it took to keep those animals alive. What would the bill, once it's passed, what would it do? It's it just going to hold would, them reliable? It would make them responsible for paying for reimbursing for all the vet care. And, mm, and like the that. food and stuff, because um, now with hoarders, it would be the same way. They might not have enough, but like um, the, the one last year that got raided uh, with all the dogs, mm. that guy has millions, you know, for donations. I mean, and nothing got spent on the dogs. So he's living rich, but the, the, the shelters and the rescues that took all those pitiful dogs, I mean, they had tumors, they had mange, they were starved. And they had to use all their money for those dogs. You know, it's over a hundred dogs, and they're still paying it a couple of years later. You wow. know, so and, and while this person is living at home, scot free, doing nothing, and just keep get, getting extensions of his court case. So that they're trying to get term. a it's but, something care. It's a something care bill, and it makes them responsible for reimbursing all the money that gets put into these animals. Also, like like if they do ever get charged, is it each individual animal like it, like it would in any other human case? So like, would it be like per animal or just the case as a whole itself? Like, what would they uh-huh. be charged with? Either one. It can be, and if you get a good prosecuting attorney, they will do every single one. If you get a lazy one that doesn't care about animals, they'll lump it all into one. I've seen both ways. Mm. I, I, I think it should be personally every single individual animal. It should because that makes the impact of it more strongly as opposed to one count of animal abuse, 99 counts of animal abuse, you know, 150 counts of animal abuse. It, it makes a more impact on the jury. You yeah. Know. And, and for the people that want to see all of these laws, like I said, uh, kyanimalwelfare.com. There's a list of them on here, unfortunately. But we still don't have a hot car bill. You that, know. That's that, that's one thing I was about to bring up that still blows my mind. Mm-hmm. That if you see an anim, a, a cat or a dog or any type of animal in a very in a hot car on a very very hot day with no air conditioner running, no water, no food supply, nothing, there's nothing you can do. Well, call the state police. Yeah, you know, first call your local and then call state. I'd call them both at the same time. Yeah. But, and but but unfortunately, I mean, sometimes it takes the police forever to get. The, yes. Yeah. I mean, yes. and document. You know, go Facebook Live. I'm sitting here in blah blah parking lot, and this car has a dog in it that we can't find the owner. You know, bring public attention to it. You yeah. know, and then maybe somebody will do something. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm just one of, of course, those. Of course, you can always just break the car window yourself. And I'm, just, I'm, run. I'm that person. I'm that person. Like, I, I just, if I know that time is of the essence and I can see them on the verge of death, I'm not going to call the cops. I'm just going to bust the window. Yeah. I'm but. a clumsy person. I can fall with a hammer in my hand and land against somebody's car. And it happens. I tripped on a shoelace. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm, but but really, and I, the uh, the bill that they're trying to pass that has to do with that, it w- the per- like nothing would happen to the person. The right? person couldn't be held criminally liable. You know, yeah. it's you know, if you're stupid enough to leave your animal in a car on a hot day with the windows rolled up and no air. You need to pay for that car window. Yeah. You know, it's not a lot. Yeah, and we're not talking about the people that are just running for a minute or two or yeah. in anything like that. I mean, the, the people that's just pure out neglect. Yeah. And also, I mean, it it does not take long. No. At all. No. I, I was, uh, I had to wait for Heather to go into a store or something like that, and I was just trying to save on gas one day, and I'm turn the car off and it, it wasn't 10 minutes i was drenched in sweat yes. and it, it just like and that hit my mind yes. like i mean if if i'm this bad off imagine an animal not even 10 minutes 10 minutes in a covered with car. hair and not able to sweat you yeah. know it's 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 even worse and um it happens all the time and, and people don't and when they do finally come out i've read they was like well i was only gone five minutes no you were gone 30 minutes you know yeah. they, you lose track of time when you go in a store and why bring your dog? Why bring your dog if you're going to leave it in the car yeah. and walk away? Just leave it at home where it's comfortable and leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I do love the car that I have right now because I can like I can take the keys with me mm-hmm. and uh, leave the car running and oh. lock the doors and mm-hmm. stuff so I can bring Raisin everywhere. It's there cool. you go. There yeah. you go. And make a little sign that says air is on so when I don't come by and break the windshield. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't now, fall now, into your windshield. Now, now, now uh, I've seen some people do that and, and that they'll they'll have fun with. Like he's listen, listening to the new Chris Stapleton CD uh, or something like that. The dog is that. fine. He's chilling. Yeah, so, yeah. I like that. And, and you know, take your dog places if you can take care of them. You know, just yeah. use some common sense. People don't think a lot of times. They don't think how hot that car is going to get. But then you got to open it and get back in it. You know how hot it is. Yeah. And, and also, like you said something to me the very first time that I met you that has stuck with me forever. Only take in what you can care for. Because so, so many people need to realize that, like, uh, I'm sure you've seen it. I, yeah, you've seen it. You commented on it. The picture that I had of the kitten that we rescued yes. a few months ago. Trust me, we wanted a kitten. That kitten was adorable, but we just couldn't take care of it. Yeah. And people need to learn to let it go and let it on to another home that will love and can take care of it. Yes. Yeah, you can... You, if it shows up on your doorstep, certainly give it food, give it shelter, but start looking for a place for it because you do nobody any good when you can't feed them or vet them or they start no. turning on each other and you, you just can't take care of them anymore. Um, it, I mean, I know my limit and I, I still see these animals on Facebook. It's like, I will call and get that animal. I will call and get that animal. But no. it's like, Shaw, you can't. You, you've only got so much income. You've only got so much space. You've only got so much time to give it. But you can help it find a good place. You know, I can share exactly. it. I can call people. I know it's like, weren't you looking for a pug? There's a pug, you know, and send them that you know picture and stuff. So you, you can do a lot to help animals besides taking care of them yourself. Yeah. You can network. Yeah. The, the one, I mean, we've taken a few strays and, and I'm so thankful to have, have took them in. But you have to know your limit. You do. But, um, but I mean, like we were saying at the beginning of this, it's just it seems to be such a rapid growing problem. And I, and I see posts about it every single day. And, and I love too, like people are starting to follow the cars and take pictures of the license plates and stuff like that. I love when they I do love, stuff love like that. Cell phones for that. I mean, you've got you have your documentation. You've got a camera. You've got a video. You can take. You know, you can. Um, a lady the other day wrote me that uh, she saw a car pull over and put two dogs out. Thankfully, they didn't throw them out the window, which seems to be a thing, too, because that just ends mm-hmm. up killing the animal. Set them out. She chased that person down nice. and, and said, why did you do that? And they gave a little half reason. Uh, and There's uh, no reason. But she, but she did get that person's license plate. She turned them in, but nothing was done because... 
property. You know, that probably yeah. the most you could get is for littering. You know, yeah. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, because uh, neglect is still not no. a form of animal abuse in no. Kentucky, is it? Because there's, yes, there are definitions of neglect. Because like one thing, definitions of adequate shelter and adequate water. I've seen people say, well, you know, the police went and looked and they had water, but it was green water. They had shelter, but it was a board against a barn, you know, so it's how you define it, you know, and so that person got away with it, you know, and Mm -hmm. so, but I've seen Pete, Louisville has the most perfect animal ordinances I've ever read. They define water, they define clean, enough food, they define shelter and stuff. So, yeah, people can take a lesson from their ordinances, what they have. Um, You you, you have to define it because if you just write, oh, animal must have shelter and water, the board and the green water is what they're going to get from some people. So, you you know, your law enforcement can only do what the law says. And if the law says water is provided, even if it's stagnant water, but if it says clean water, you know, uh, free of debris, you, you can. And it doesn't take that many more words and it's easy to do that. Define what clean water is, which mm-hmm. you wouldn't think you'd have to, but you do because people take advantage of everything. I, I, I hope that they, whenever they do go about passing those type of laws, and they do... Bye, Jolie Newsom, whoever you are. <laughs> whenever they do end up passing those laws and they do start getting very specific about it, I, I hope that they somehow put into the words about shelter during the winter time because yes. that's one thing that really breaks my heart is seeing some of these houses and they'll have a dog outside and they've got just a little box to sleep in and there's a foot of snow yes. on top of it yes just because it is a dog house that you bought from a really nice place doesn't mean it will keep them cool in the summer and warm in the winter you know yeah. In the wintertime, you need to get some straw and put in there. And you need to make sure it is, well, if you can't bring them in, which bring them in if you can. Yeah. You know, if you've got a garage, if you've got, you know, something like that, even if they can't come in the house, put them, fix them up that way. But they need the straw. They need to be, it needs to be faced where the wind's not blowing in the opening of the dog house. Uh. You know, it's just a plastic box, people, is what a dog house is. Yeah. And, you know, you've seen where people put a thermometer in there in the summertime and it gets even hotter because it's a plastic box. And that's not enough to keep your pet yeah. sheltered. And, and, you know, some people might get mad at me for saying this, but if you're going to have an animal and just keep them outside, why do you even have one in the first place? And especially having them tethered to a short chain. Why do that? Yeah, it, it, th- that's no life for any type of animal. That's not a pet. That's not anything that, you know... Um, Get get a yard gnome and stick out there, you know, if you just want something in your yard. But that dog's not going to keep you protected. You know, you're not having that protection if it's tied to like a four foot chain and can't walk around or go to the bathroom other places than where it sleeps. Don't do it. And they say, oh, it lets me know if somebody's outside. Listen, my my little dog, if you're five feet away from my house, she can sense you. And Mm -hmm. she's barking at the door. She knows you're out there. Yes. And she's been inside her entire life. And, yeah, she's always right. There's something or somebody out there. Yes. Uh, they, They can be inside and still be a guard dog. Well, and then you can get, for little of nothing, one of those driveway chimes that if somebody pulls in or walks in, yeah. a noise goes off, you know, and that that's a lot more reliable, you know, and just do that. And it's not harming any living thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen criminal movies where they just toss the dog a steak, you know. Yes. I mean, there's ways to, for the criminals to get around that. That is. Sparky ain't doing too good of a job. And, and if inside. Sparky is half starved and having heat stroke, he's not going to be barking anyway at somebody, you know. he's He's a living thing. Let someone else have him. Exactly. But Shaw, I think that what you do with the Animal Alliance of Eastern Kentucky and all the other organizations you work with do incredible things. And for the people that want to learn more about what it is that you have going on and also get the tickets to Wolfstock (gasps) and all that good stuff, how do they do that? Mountain Arts Center, MacArts.com, or call 606-886-2636. If I can bring a couple more things. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Wolfstock, um, you know, you get the great music, 
you get the adult beverages because Brick House is there. But um, Mountain Music Exchange has donate, graciously donated a guitar to us. We're going to have everyone sign it that's in the show and sell chances on it and raffle it off during Wolfstock. Oh, cool. We'll be selling our T-shirts. But we also have um, Little Bubby Child has donated <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a whole bunch of signed prints for us to sell at Wolfstock. And I, this was one of my favorites that I brought in. But he, we have several that he donated. Um, it's the possum. And it says, baby, you come into my life like a possum in the night. And my heart was the cat food you stole. That is a Hallmark card right that there. That is a Hallmark that. card. What better says love than this? You know? <laughs> and we have those and others for sale. And so we'll have the guitar. We've got the adult beverages. We've got the little bubby things. All sorts of stuff at Wolfstock. Uh, well, well, for the people that don't know what little bubby child is, you go on. I think it's it's Facebook. He's got a Facebook right? page. Facebook, yeah, go go on Facebook and just type it in and go through the hundreds of pictures that that person hilarious. has put up and there. So he is such a fan base right now. And and some people, it's, it's, some people say, well, we haven't heard of him yet. Look it up. You will love him. He's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, I have friends that share his stuff all the time, and uh, oh, he is he, just hilarious. But for but for also the people that want to uh, know about the Animal Alliance of Eastern Kentucky and the low cost spay and neuter programs that you do, and and, and also just everything else that y'all support, how mm-hmm. do they go about doing that? Our website is aaeky.org, and our Facebook page is Animal Alliance of East Kentucky. Shaw, you're one of the best people on oh, planet Earth. Well. Thank you for all the great work that you and the rest of the guys and gals with that you work with do. Mm-hmm. Thank Y'all you. are angels on this Earth. This is Thank why you. I was put on Earth. I really believe it's to help animals. So, But... It takes us all. We need everyone. So please, please buy a ticket. Oh, and I've also been telling people, if for some reason you're out of town and you can't come to Wolfstock, buy a couple of tickets anyway. Leave them at the box office and let tell them to let me know. I will donate them in your name to a shelter worker, to a transporter, to mm. someone in rescue. So trust me, everyone's overworked and they could use a really nice evening out. And also get one of these wicked awesome t-shirts. Yes, we will have those for sale too. So yay. Shaw, thank you so much. Thank you for everything you do. See you next week, folks. Boom. Boom. There we go. Woo. And I never said a bad word or anything. It's, <laughs> yeah.